Sorry, uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, does anyone know this one? This satellite? Um, this was a project from NASA in 1999, and it was destroyed halfway because um, the satellite used SI units and the engineers used inches. This is literally rocket science, and people blew this up. And this is Samsung Galaxy S10. The phone came this year, and it has a fingerprint sensor that you can put your finger on, uh, on the display, and it's supposed to unlock the phone. This is also a failure because they forgot that people actually use screen protectors on the phones, and it didn't work. Uh, this is Heartbreak, the icon. Uh, this is 2014. Um, there was a library called OpenSSL, and this was a huge vulnerability. About 90% of all the servers in the planet, they were vulnerable. This will probably know, 2014. Uh, they have a name, but I don't want to tell the name. <laughs> um, just this line, just one line, and pretty much every Drupal site was vulnerable, and eight hours, pretty much every site was started to get attacked. We repeat the same, same thing. It's not the same vulnerability, but 2018. And this is from JavaScript, because PHP and JavaScript, we both make mistakes. Um, so the author of this plugin, uh, they give the plugin to someone else to maintain, and this new owner, they put uh, JavaScript that would um, try to uh, steal bitcoins. So you can see a pattern here. Um, these are people. These are some of the most smartest people. And one of them, they are, it has literally rocket science. And people, we always make mistakes. I have made so many mistakes when I was coding. And I'm going to beat all my euros that you have made mistakes as well. So. There we go, we all make mistakes. And speaking of security, um, this OpenSSL open SSL vulnerability was a big one. Um, because this vulnerability, uh, people started to create new libraries. And Drupal, we had two vulnerabilities, but here we are room, a room full of Drupal people. Because just because there was one mistake, that doesn't mean that's the end of the project. And sure, we make mistakes, but we can also learn from them. Uh, I like to highlight the fact that we just make mistakes and we are here to learn. And we don't blame anyone, uh, we don't tell anything bad about them, we just learn, learn from the mistakes and we try to improve on. Uh, and this talk is the last top 10. Uh, we talked about the top 10 security vulnerabilities we had in the past few years uh, and we try to learn from them. Uh, my name, wow, this photo is super big. Uh, my name is Ayesh Karnaradna, and the, since, since the last time I was in Drupal, Drupal Europe, uh, I'm now a full-time traveler, meaning I travel all the time. Uh, you can find me on social media, uh, and I was born in Sri Lanka. Um, I'm on GitHub, uh, Drupal here as well. So if you have questions, you can find me on all the social media. Uh, so we talked about OWASP. Uh, it stands for uh, Open Web Application Security Project. Uh, it's an online community, and it's free as in beer and free as in free speech. Um, it's a community, but uh, they also have resources about online, uh, how you can fix security vulnerabilities, how you can try to improve these things. Um, so here I am today to talk about uh, the top 10 vulnerabilities, um, and more about Drupal as well. Um, before I start to talk about security, now we have a room full of security <coughs> people, because we like security, that's why we are here. Um, security is a big field. We have so many abbreviations, and there's no way we know all of them, right? But we have to focus on the basic idea, why we have this, and why this happens. Um, so this field is massive, all these abbreviations, security people like to use abbreviations for some reason. Um, but here we are today to talk about the top 10 uh, ways we mess things up. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is unexpected surprises. Because most of the security issues we have, it's because we assume that things will happen this way, but it doesn't happen that way. We have some expectations. I'm a coder, I work from, I write code. 
and sometimes we have front-end designers, sometimes we have project managers, all these people, we have some expectations, but security is about breaking these expectations. We get surprises, and they tend to be bad. Um, imagine we have a simple search form, and you can, well, can sorry, people can type anything. For example, they try to find the pet falls. This is the form. Uh, so we try to show the search results here, and you can see this is pretty simple stuff from PHP. This works, and you can change this to meatballs. Still works. Uh, does anyone see something wrong about this? Something that could go? You can't but, use, a, use a input like that. Yes. If you put HTML, that works. Because this is not bad. This is just beautiful search query. But if you start to put a script, this will pop up. Because here we have a JavaScript. And for HTML, it doesn't know the difference. Because we just show print this HTML on the browser, and the browser does it. This is not bad. This is bad. So the way it works is uh, we have the image tag. And if there's an error, we ask them, ask the browser to submit all the cookies uh, to this third party website. Um, this is pretty simple attack, but this can be devastating. You can share this URL right here um, to 50 people or 100 people in this room. And as long as, as the first time they go to this page, the, the browser will submit all these cookies to this third party website. This URL, that's it. If this looks scary enough, you can just show them this URL and send this one. This looks friendly enough, right? But go to this URL, and this browser will send all this cookie to this evil, evil website. Another use case, SQL. Uh, so we basically have this query, uh, select all the ports from uh, where the title is the search query. Sounds good, works good enough. But if you put SQL in here, for the, uh, for the SQL server, that's it. Yeah, we are just asking uh, the server to pick ports that has the title best proposals and then drop the same table. That's it, that's the end of the story. Uh, that's even the comic that I had to put this comic everywhere, you haven't probably seen this. Um, so, in the school, um, there's a kid with the name <coughs> Robert Drop Table Students, and in the school they don't have any. Uh, protection for the database, the same thing we had before, and the database, database is gone. Another situation, because we are talking about surprises, um, this is XML. Did anyone know that in XML you can load files? Right. Uh, so XML, that's a feature that you can load a third-party file from the server. This sounds interesting, right? So of course, if you want to hack a website, um, and if you can upload XML, you can actually use this form to um, ask the XML parser, hey, can you go and take the data from this file? And the parser will do it. Another situation. Um, this is a pretty simple PHP class. Uh, so when the class is being destructed, um, we ask PHP to put the, all the contents of this file, all the, these contents to this file, and PHP will do it. Uh, we also have a function called serialize that um, PHP will convert any Java, any uh, PHP object to a string, so you can share them, email them, tweet them, post to them in database. But if you get them from the user, and if the user sends something like this, and when you unserialize them, or as in you take the object back from the string, this will be executed, and although we have good intentions. Um, this object, this uh, when you unserialize, when you extract from this one, uh, you will write a die to this index PHP, meaning the site is gone. So the, the, the common pattern we have here is that we can never trust the user input, right? Because everything comes from users, and they can be good users, they can be bad users, and we never know. This is a web application. It's not something. We talk to people, each other. I have a chart that um, when you should trust the user input. There. 
Uh, this is also interesting because um, sometimes we think uh, we should uh, be careful when we take something from the user. But what do we take them? It's also important because uh, we shouldn't transform inputs. This is kind of obvious, right? User submit the forms. Okay. Uh, queries from the URL makes sense. You can change them easily. URL parts, again, the same thing. Uh, database records. Database is not a trusted source because someone else can change something in the database. It can be an editor or someone who has access to the database. So database records, they are not something that we can trust. We also have user uploads, files, PHP files, executable files. This could also be untrusted user input. We also have emails. Um, sometimes you can send an email and the server will process its email, which could also go bad. Uh, cookies. Uh, you send cookies to the browser <coughs> and you expect to get them back. But that doesn't mean the, browser, the user can't change them. So cookies. And there are some other interesting things that um, I'm, I want to show before. Uh, it should be headers. Sometimes websites send uh, specific headers uh, that can be harmful. DNS records, you can enter, you can put um, harmful payloads to the database. From then, DNS records could happen. Quiz records, interesting ones. I have some examples. Uh, and environment variables, so in Mostly in Lux servers, we pass uh, secret values, passwords, or some configuration values from environment variables, which also can be trusted. There was a vulnerability called HTTP proxy, uh, which happened because environment variables were not trusted. And everything else that comes from users. Pretty much everything, if you don't know the cells, and even if you know the cells, and if there is more than one person that could provide this data, this is something that we should not trust. And we will talk um, how we can protect against them. Um, sorry. Um, before I come here, uh, I did some experiment. And in my website, um, I sent this header, uh, expired by PHP 6. And um, this one says drop table. And it, the, the one that you can't see here is I sent a script as well. So. It's a header from the website. And we have seen some website that you just type the URL and it will send you, show you the HTTP headers that the website had. There are many online tools, I Google them. From the first page, I could actually find one. Go to this website, enter the URL, and it will pop up the script. This is live even right now. Go to this website, try it, and it still works. I actually find two, sorry. Oh, three. Four and five. I just gave up because I want to keep this session smaller. Uh, the same goes for DNS queries as well. Uh, you can see uh, I tried to send some script here. Again, DNS queries, this script will pop up. So you can see how terrible things are, right? Um, we can't trust form inputs, we can't trust pretty much anything. And there are so many sites that, that are still vulnerable. Uh, so how do we prevent them? Uh, because we don't trust user input, we have to have a set of rules that uh, this is some value that I, I accept, and this is some value that I do not accept. So we can validate things. We can also sanitize all the input. And there's another one called escape. Um, when it's job validation, it means uh, we validate the user input when we take it. If you have a user registration form, and if you have an email email field, you can validate the email field right here, because if you take um, anything that's not an email address, that's not going to work. So that's validation. We have to know the exact format, because if you take a URL, we can validate it for URL. If you take an email, we can validate for emails. So this is a valid entry. valid entry. This is not. Also not. Uh, we can also sanitize them. Sanitizing means uh, we accept the values, but we are going to remove the parts that are harmful. Uh, we can remove HTML tags or SQL characters that we use. Um, and 
this is useful when you can't reject uh, the user input. For example, if we get an email, uh, we can't reject the email because we have already received this email. So that's where sanitizing comes up. Uh, for example, if you get something like this, uh, you can uh, change this one and remove the script tags and keep the things in the middle. Uh, if you get a file name, for so file names you can't use a star character, uh, but you can replace them with underscore. Drupal does this. If you try to upload a file to Drupal with the star in it, Drupal will change the name to an underscore. Again, it, this the same thing happens in Drupal as well. Um, if you have a class name that cannot be a class name, Drupal will simply replace uh, these characters with underscore and call it today. This is valid input. This is safe output. Escaping. Uh, this is also something we do quite often. Uh, the way we do this is um, we take the harmful effect from the input to string and then we convert into something that's not harmful. But this also depends on where do you put the output. If you have an HTML form, if you have HTML display, um, you have to kind of make sure that this this output is not executed as HTML. But if you're trying to use this in SQL, you have to escape it for SQL. Because HTML characters, they're different from SQL. So they have to, this had to depend on um, where do we use these strings. There's one framework that does this wrong. Um, so that's one framework. They run 30% of the web. Um, they convert values when they're input. So this is wrong. I will show you why. But uh, there are frameworks that does this wrong, and Drupal is doing this really right. Um, how do we do this? Uh, we replace the HTML characters. Um, if you have this one as user input, uh, you can change them to um, a harmless output. Because in HTML, these things are called HTML entities. And the browser will render them as this one. So we get this one. This is not pretty, but we don't execute this JavaScript in the browser, so this is safe. This is the basic idea of sanitizing everything. If you have SQL, we escape them to be safe in SQL. If you have XML, we escape them to be safe in XML. HTML, same thing. Uh, MySQL, uh, we can use prepared, prepared statements. We tell the browser, uh, do we tell the SQL server, hey, this part comes from the user. Don't interpret as it, don't, don't interpret this as my own SQL. And uh, the browser will now see this one. Uh, so the browser, uh, SQL server, it will try to find posts with the title this. And it does not try to drop the, post, drop the table posts. So this is what you get. How do we do this? Um, to validation, uh, PHP has a function called filter bar. It has a whole bunch of uh, parameters that you can ask them to validate against URLs, email addresses, all these things. Uh, WordPress also has one. So I did tell the word name WordPress in, in Drupal.com. Yay. <laughs> um, Drupal. Um, we have a function called valid email address, and then you can, um, is it valid or is it not? You get uh, a truth or false. Uh, Joomla also has one, so diversity. Uh, JavaScript, uh, sorry, Node.js as well. Uh, you can validate email addresses. Um, here's some documentation for them. Uh, I watch why do I have at the end of the session. Uh, sanitize them. PHP also has the filter bar, same function, but you can ask them to sanitize this email. So these invalid three characters, these pounds, pound strings, uh, PHP will remove them, and then you can get um, the correct email address. WordPress also has it. Uh, Drupal don't have it because it doesn't make sense to sanitize emails. So we can just say no. Um, this is documentation, um, and we can also escape them. Uh, this is actually kind of the important part. Um, for, for HTML, uh, there's a function uh, filter bar again, but we ask them to sanitize uh, for um, HTML characters, uh, which is our hand show, uh, shortcut for HTML special challenge function as well. Uh, escape HTML from WordPress. 
um, Drupal has checked line from Drupal 7, but Drupal 8 doesn't have a similar function. Um, Joomla, we also have um, from JS as well. Here's the documentation. Um, so this this URL, the filter bar function, um, it's a kind of new function, but it has validation features for pretty much everything, URLs, and uh, this is, you don't depend on a regular expression or you don't depend on anything else. So um, I recommend that we start to use this function um, and not assume a special chance because what is special chance we don't know. Uh, WordPress, all the documentation here. Uh, for SQL, uh, the way we can say to PHP that this is a, a valid, um, not valid, unsafe uh, input from the user, uh, we prepare a statement, and this, for this statement, we can execute it with the user provided values, <coughs> and we can get the values back. Uh, WordPress also has one, um, Drupal. Um, so it's similar to the same pattern here, and um, you can use as much as, as many as parameters you want, but um, we have a small limitation that if you use a limit or order by, um, in the query, it has to be um, stripped out, as in uh, it has to be an integer. Um, oh, again, okay, documentation. So, do you remember the first example that um, they executed JavaScript? This is, I told you this is not harmful, but it can be made <laughs> harmful if you put anything in a script that can steal cookies or do anything bad. That's we call cross-site scripting. And do you remember the example that they, someone could try to execute SQL, what we call the injection. And uh, the one that we had XML, and you could include file from this XML, we call them XM, XML external entities. And this one that uh, someone could try to change its values and uh, delete the file, we call them in serialization. So the topic is about top 10, and we are already here at four. So the most of the talk is about these four, these four because um, I work as a security researcher, and you have probably seen my name in some of the emails that you get on every Wednesday. Um, these four accounts to pretty much every security issue we have. Uh, we just forget to sanitize some form fields or in templates, we sometimes forget that, hey, this is user input. We just forget these things. And these things are bugs. It's not a mistake that we should be ashamed of, we just forgot to do it. Um, so, talking about injection, uh, never trust user input, remember the chart about it. Um, use parameters, like from the example before, and don't try to escape your own, own SQL. Uh, because most of the databases, they provide a way to pass parameters. Um, for example, MySQL has, for light queries, MySQL has a percentage sign, but not every database has it. So try to use um, the database driver tools. Um, and the other thing, HTML and email headers are vulnerable too. Uh, because this is also user input, and I have seen so many examples and so many projects that they just forget that this is user input. Um, Sometimes we want to, uh, I, I have never seen people do this, but I can um, see some other projects that does this. Um, sometimes you can ask users, to, can you provide a SQL query and then I will run it for you? Never do it, because uh, there's a project called Symphony Expression Language. Um, they do, do this really nice. So the way it works is that uh, if you want to have a query and if you want to ask the user what kind of projects you want, and um, the user can type, I need post with the name is this one, or a post with this amount of comments. Uh, don't, uh, don't let them type SQL, use expression languages, or even rules. <coughs> um, you can also use low privilege database users. This means um, when you connect to the database, you can use uh, a user account that cannot access other databases. Not the root, definitely not the root. Cross-site scripting. Again, never transfer the input. I have typed this, I copy paste this site many times. Um, escape values right before you are, are putting them. Again, WordPress does this the other way. Um, 
when you put something on HTML templates, right before you print this, it can be a quick file, uh, it can be template files or TPL or PHP files on Drupal 7. Um, sanitize them right before you output them because the value could be used in something else. And when we, know, when we print them from the last step, we know that this is going to be used in HTML. Uh, cookies. Um, there's one example that uh, someone tried to steal a cookie. And this wouldn't happen. If, when you send a cookie, if you mark this cookie as uh, HTTP only, that means no one can steal this cookie. Uh, there's also uh, a security header called um, Content Security Policy. Um, I have done a talk just on this, uh, this HTTP security, uh, HTTP headers. I have a link in, at the end of the session. Um, so from this security header, you can tell the browser to never load scripts from um, any other domains than the, one that, than the one you have mentioned before. Images, you can pretty much uh, contain, if someone manages to access your site, you can use this header to pretty much contain the damage that they can do. <coughs> Uh, markdown, because we can't trust. Um, sometimes we have uh, in Drupal we have uh, a filter called full HTML, which is actually full HTML. Uh, so uh, sometimes when we work on projects, it's probably better to use Markdown or similar markup languages, BB code or something, if we can use them uh, for security reasons. Because uh, when you use BB code or Markdown, you know that you can't put script in it. Um, PHP also has a joke function called strip tags. Um, it does strip tags, but it doesn't strip um, the, the attributes you have, which can be used to um, execute any JavaScript. If you see this function, there's a very good chance that there's a security vulnerability there. So just drop for it and then try to find these places. Um, proper HTML sanitization. Because strip tags doesn't work, they have to use uh, HTML purifier or uh, different projects to actually <coughs> process HTML and remove all the bad attributes and all the bad tags. Um, the other one is insecure in in unserialization. Uh, PHP has these two functions, serialize and serialize. Um, they can execute, ja execute any um, PHP they want. We, show, we saw some example before. And if this input comes from the user, never unserialize it because we know we don't know what's coming up. Again, never trust this input. And uh, you can validate the data with HMAC. Uh, I don't have examples for this one, but the basic idea is that uh, you get the hash value of um, the thing that you want to unserialize. And if someone changes its value, this hash, is, hash wouldn't be the same. So you can see if, if something has changed. Um, you can sometimes see, uh, because sometimes we have old computers that use 32-bit uh, registers, uh, but if you unserialize it to a 64-bit, you can still get the value. But if you do it the other way, it means we get uh, a popular integer overflows. Uh, you can read more about it, but uh, this, I try to keep these things smaller. Um, XML entities. Uh, so PHP has this function that you can just disable this and call it today. You are will be safe. Um, you can also enforce XML schema because uh, XML schema is a way that you can enforce that this XML value should follow this one. It must follow this standard. Um, and you can, if you use a third-party uh, decoders for XML, you have to configure them one by one to not fetch files or not do anything else. Uh, so that's about uh, unpleasant surprises. Um, if just When you look at a project, um, check all the outputs and check everywhere that you accept and use input and see if there can be a surprise. Because I guarantee you, because we forget most of the things, we are just humans and I forget many things and we all forget many things, there could be one or two ways that someone can sneak in, and if there's just one, that means they can escalate themselves to be anyone inside. Um, pretty much every security issue I have found so far, they belong to this one. Not something that we talk about decrypting something with 55 computers or anything, it's just simple mistakes 
that lead to bigger issues. Uh, the second chapter is about unpleasant visitors. Uh, all these photos, by the way, they are from uh, National Geographic, uh, one of the best photos from each year. Um, so, we have a site, uh, the URL, and we show some information. It doesn't have to be Drupal, some website, um, this is pretty simple, right? Drupal has the same pattern, user slash, and then this is actually my Drupal user ID. You can go to this page and it will show my information. But if I change this ID to something else, and if you don't have any protection to prevent someone from accessing this, accessing this information, that you're actually leaking information of your, all your other users. In Drupal.org, you can go to someone else's page and this is allowed, but sometimes you just forget to, to clear the checkbox about reading user profiles and that could lead to data exposure. Also, we have this edit URL. This, by the way, is edit form, just pretend it's edit form. Um, change the user ID, and if you don't have any proper authentication, proper authorization to check if the current user can actually access this uh, URL, if I'm user 7981, whatever that user ID, I shouldn't be able to edit someone else's profile. And sometimes this is a super simple thing, but we actually forget that we have to check access for this one. Um, and we have a name for it. This is broken access control because it sounds simple, but um, we have to check every page or every action to make sure that uh, the user that we have logged in or the user that they pretend to be, they have access to do it. Have we seen this error as well? We get the white screen and then we see this error message. We have seen this multiple times before, right? Uh, but this is like information. If you look at this one, you can see, from just from the error message, you can see that they are probably using MySQL. And from this line, you can actually see there's a file called inventory slash db.php, and on line 8, they tried to do something. So this is some sort of information that we should not show to someone else. Attackers, they could use this because now that we know this is using MySQL, so we can focus our attack on MySQL. And this is data exposure. This is from Xdebug. If you have uh, the Xdebug extension, uh, it will screen all these error messages with the whole trace, whole extract trace. So you can see all the, um, the class names, the file names, <coughs> numbers. There's so much information that you can find just from this one. And these are error pages. It's not something that you check every day. And because it's error message, uh, you want it to be super helpful, but it's also helpful for, for attackers as well. Uh, so combine these error messages or stack traces or any error messages you show. This is what we call sensitive data exposure <coughs> because these data, they're not meant to be for regular users. This is sensitive data. And then we show them to anyone who managed to access this page. And the other one, uh, we have a login page, and uh, imagine this is login form. Um, we have seen all these clauses, right? The password must be less than eight characters. We try to shame all the banks with eight character passwords. Or sometimes we have things like this, password should not contain these characters. Or something like this, like ridiculous <laughs> ones, the password must be uppercase or dragon blood. <laughs> Um, and you can't copy paste passwords. So all these password advisors, or all, all these login forms and all this information, all these restrictions, they come from some kind of myth that you try to make this form secure, but you're actually making them insecure. Because if, if, I, if my password is 30, 30 characters long, it doesn't matter if I'm using um, special characters because my password is long enough to um, to be secure enough. Uh, and this is broken authentication. Uh, we had some examples about this as well. So back to top 10, uh, we talked about three more, uh, three to go. Um, sensitive data exposure, sorry. Sensitive data exposure. Uh, hide or error messages. Just, we should not be showing technical error messages to users, period. Um, 
error logs. You can log them to um, <coughs> error log, uh, so you can see later and what went wrong. But it's not useful to end users, and it's actually super useful for attackers. So keep them in the logs, but not actually show them. Exceptions and error handlers. So uh, Drupal 8 and Drupal 8.9 all the way to 9, uh, we try to use exceptions as much as possible. Uh, and sometimes if you don't catch the exception, uh, this is a PHP way to say that if there's an error, I want this error to be caught. And if you don't catch it, it means it becomes an error and this whole error message is going to be shown to end users. Uh, so you can set uh, exception handlers to make sure that all the exception handlers, I'm going to load them, but not to show to users. Um, you can, this you have probably seen this one as well. Uh, so when you web, visit the website, it shows you are using PHP 7.2 or 5.2. Don't help you if you do it. Uh, all these versions, uh, you don't have to show them. And sometimes this is pretty common in PHP Mailer, the old Mailer client. It shows uh, where which file the, um, the email was sent from, the PHP version, and PHP Mailer version. We don't have to show these versions, but the plugin does it. Um, so you have to hide all this information as much as possible. Uh, user passwords. When you store user passwords, uh, don't store the plain text password. You have to hash them. Uh, WordPress does it, so Drupal definitely does it. Um, always use HTTPS. This is kind of given, right? Uh, and always be defensive because we never, we can never trust these users. And um, if we try to be defensive. If we don't show information to anyone, that's our take. That's the stand that we should take. Authentication. Um, always hash with passwords like the one we talked before. Um, so Drupal 7, they use uh, a library called PHP Pass. Um, and speaking from a security perspective, it's not, not the most secure um, solution we have. So I, have, I wrote a plugin to use uh, PHP uh, password hash plugins. I wrote one for WordPress as well. Um, and you have probably heard about these hashing algorithms, MD5, and all this, even SFT3, uh, this is like a few years old. Even the sharp uh, hashing <coughs> algorithms, they are just hashing algorithms. They're not good enough to, to store passwords. Um, so also, I always use this uh, function password hash and password verify. Uh, if you use Drupal, you are good, but if you write something on PHP, you can use these um, functions. Um, there's also the rule about uh, don't use these um, special characters, or you must be using these characters. Um, you can see many of the projects nowadays, they don't enforce this one. So if you are a bank, please don't do this. Um, and there's also um, advice about rotating passwords. So there used to be an advice that uh, you should enforce user to change the password every three months or every six months. Uh, this tend to be a bad advice because we have password managers today and the password managers will create a secure password and then it will just store there. And there's no reason for us to change the password every three months. And if you ask the user to change the password, they just put one at the end of the password anyway. So don't, there's no good reason to do it. Uh, sometimes password must be eight, six characters, six digits long, and should not be longer. There used to be some things, restrictions like this, right? Um, so in the security community, we say uh, at least eight, <coughs> at least eight characters. Um, that's the minimum limit, and then you can go to seventy-two. Uh, this sounds like magic number, but um, with Drupal and WordPress, all these um, PHP frameworks we have today. Uh, the 72 is the number that uh, the underlying library called bcrypt can handle. So if you have password 72 characters long and 72, that's actually the same password. Um, so 72 is actually pretty long enough. Uh, and Drupal, there was a security vulnerability a few years ago that you can send a massive packet to be encrypted and it can take down the site because the password hashing input is so long Drupal has to spend a few minutes to hash this password. 
So it's good to have um, a maximum limit as well. Uh, password reset forms. I like to say password reset forms are backdoor because sometimes you can create the most secure login form and the password reset form is terrible. So there's no risk for it. There's no use for it. Uh, try to secure the password reset forms as much as possible as well. Um, in Drupal, we are kind of golden um, because after five attempts, uh, Drupal will block the user saying, hey, you tried too much, slow down. If you try to write something by yourself, there are so many good advices that you can take uh, from Drupal. Don't roll your own crypto. This is kind of like a slug for cryptographic community. Um, don't try to invent your own password, password hashing algorithms because the one we that use on PHP called Bcrypt and Argon too, they tend to be uh, researched really well and they tend to be much better than the one that we write on hand papers or something. Um, Robin access control. Uh, now, the one thing that we should remember is that HTTP is a stateless protocol. Just because the fact that the user can access this page, it doesn't mean the user is allowed to that page. Uh, so for every page, or every request, every HTTP request, we have to validate that the user has access to do this. Because HTTP is stateless, you can even copy one request and then try to repeat the same request once again and do something bad. Um, check the access on from the user as early as possible. Uh, because you can say no if a user 5 is trying to edit the form from user 8. You can just say no, and there's no reason for you to check it after. Um, so these all access checks, they should be done from the beginning of the request. Um, if you have forms that change anything, deleting something, updating something, they should be uh, forms of the type post uh, and not get. Uh, because HTTP standard says all the get forms should not change anything in the, in the application. Use post forms for that. Uh, there's another one called cross-site cross -site request forgery. This used to be uh, one of the vulnerabilities from OWASP top 10, um, but not anymore. Uh, Drupal does this really well. Um, if you have a form, um, there's always um, a random looking form at the end of the form, uh, a field at the end of the form. And this is to make sure that uh, no one can submit the form without like, actually seeing the form first. Um, Drupal actually does this really well, uh, so I have not uh, put any examples there. Uh, but there are some projects uh, that you can, uh, I have written one as well, uh, that you can generate uh, a CSR, CSRF token, and then you submit the token along the form, so you can validate that this is actually a form that you send to the user first. Uh, this is a new one. Um, there's a when you send a cookie, you can similar to the one that you send HTTP only. Uh, there's another flag called same site. Uh, so when the browser receives this, um, it doesn't send the cookie uh, to <coughs> any other requests that come from different sites. Uh, this kind of works as uh, a way to prevent uh, people from um, <coughs> pretending to be someone else. Again, you say GPS everywhere. And the last episode we have is negligence. Um, this one is a security misconfiguration. High error messages, we talked about this before. Uh, low error messages, but don't show them. Uh, we have secure protocols called TLS and SSL. SSL, don't use them. Uh, TLS 1.2 and 1.3, they are the current standard ones. Um, database snapshots and files. We have backup migrate module. Uh, if you leave all these files without proper, proper protection, someone can then try to download the database and access all the information. Um, change default password. Uh, this is kind of a joke for MongoDB um, because when you install MongoDB, there's no password at all. And if you install, if you don't change the passwords, anyone can access it in MongoDB, MongoDB, MongoDB database. Uh, SSH access. Uh, sometimes we use simple passwords uh, for SSH, but you can change them to use um, a private key to access uh, your servers. Uh, we also have firewalls to prevent uh, certain 
any IP addresses from connecting to them, just a specific set of IP addresses. Um, components with security vulnerabilities, meaning use the latest PHP versions, use uh, latest Drupal versions, update your modules as well, compose update, you can update Drupal modules as from, from this as well. Uh, semantic versioning, uh, this is a way to show that this update will not break anything in sight. This update will break minor things, or this update will break major things. Uh, Drupal does not follow this, uh, but you can always check from the each update that if this is gonna, gonna break something. Uh, security announcements. Drupal, we send out um, emails on every Monday, every Wednesday, um, about any security issues, uh, to try to keep an eye about them. Uh, you can subscribe to security updates. Um, because the Drupal, Drupal getting, um, it was hacked in just eight hours. So it's kind of important to be in touch with the security issues. Um, CI systems. Um, this is a way that you can uh, test everything in the site for every change that you make. Uh, so if something goes bad, uh, you can know that this is actually going bad before someone else realizes this. Um, there are two projects. Um, this one is Drupal Security Advisories. Um, if you install this on Composer, um, and if you try to install a plugin with um, a known vulnerability, Composer will show, no, I can't do this because this is insecure. And the same projects for uh, PHP as well. Uh, so try to use these two projects. I use them pretty much every project I have. And the last one is in submission logging. We talked a lot about logging because it's actually quite important. Uh, exception handlers and error handlers. PHP 7, you can catch error handlers, errors, and then load the error messages, but don't show, but not show the error messages to the users. Um, load them to file. Uh, also, we assign system logs to uh, detect when someone tries to access um, your server on SSH, and if this was failed, uh, this is going to be in, this is going to end up in the log as well. Um, keep stuff in the logs. Uh, there's the only GDPR regulations that you have to keep the logs for one year and delete them if the user asks to delete them, which I don't personally agree with, but that's the law. And use the logs in a way that no one can change them, so append only logs. Um, and real time monitoring. Uh, there are so many tools that you can detect if there's a sudden traffic in, there's a sudden traffic spike, and that kind of means something's going bad. Uh, so back to top 10. And we talked about top 10. This is from 2017. There's no OWASP top 10 for 18 or 2019. Uh, that's because nothing has actually changed quite much. Uh, OWASP project started in 2009, and all these years, injection was number one. Uh, cross site screen was number <coughs> second, uh, the second one. And I tried to spend more time on the first few because that's where most of the vulnerabilities will be and that's the easiest one to mistake. So there we go to uh, the top 10. The things that we learned today. One, never trust user input because it can be harmful, it can be anything. So if you see a user input anywhere, be defensive, don't trust them. Security vulnerabilities, they are bugs. Uh, just because I have made so many security mistakes that I should be ashamed of myself, but I'm not. We are talking about security. Um, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. Build security into pipeline. Um, like the project that I showed before, if you try to install a plugin with vulnerabilities, you should have some system saying, no, this is bad, don't do it. Or you can have CI CD pro solutions that uh, test everything when you update a plugin, update a module. Uh, so build them into pipelines. And the most important thing is raising awareness. Um, because I talk about security quite a lot, and I see a room full of people interested in security, and I have so much respect for all of you for being interested in security. Because a few years ago, we used PHP just like it, and then we never cared about security, and here we have a room full of people actually caring about security. So we are halfway there. If you see any security issues, try to report to people, uh, websites or anyone, uh, and raise awareness. I have a bunch of other resources. Um, 
some of this is a talk that I gave a few days ago. Uh, so it has more information about uh, HTTP headers. Um, and there's also a URL that you can uh, submit a survey about DrupalCon itself. Um, the first one is OWASP.10. Uh, it's a wiki. You can edit them as well. And there's plenty of information that you can just read. Uh, and this field for function, this is a rather new function, but it can do so many things well. Um, last, uh, any questions? I will repeat the question if you have it. Yeah. I have a question when it comes to um, sort of like the user ID and that kind of stuff. Uh, with Drupal, everything is like node slash node ID. Um, I've always wondered if sort of uh, the security vulnerabilities with having it pretty predictable. And like if I wanted to go to a site that I figured out is Drupal, I could just go iterate through one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to however and see what I can find. But do you have any sort of insight into that? Um, so the question was about uh, trying to guess the IDs and just reiterate them from one to all the way and see what kind of information we have. Um, Drupal, we have uh, content access, so you can actually prevent people from um, accessing nodes that they should not access. Uh, but I don't think we have any solution to prevent the node ID thing. But uh, you can change the router to accept, uh, there are some page plugins called, uh, I think, uh, UUID, that you can generate uh, quite longer strings. That's quite difficult to guess. Um, that there are some uh, things that you have to consider, because I remember my Drupal ID. But if it's like a super long string, I probably won't remember. Um, but for projects like this, I think um, UUID module um, and similar projects, they can actually change the way um, the nodes or users, anything that access. Uh, you can also use um, uh, URL alias, URL alias, and if it's a user ID, you can just say no, you have to come from the user alias, um, URL alias. It's not the best solution, but I think that's what we have. Okay. okay. Uh, you spoke about HTTP headers, which shouldn't be proposed, which shouldn't describe the platform or the software which you're using, you have a solution how to cut this in Drupal? Uh, Drupal actually sends um, a meta tag saying, hey, I'm using Drupal 8, or I'm using okay. Drupal 7. Um, I think there's a plugin to just hide this. It's a super simple plugin, uh, but you can hide it as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll be short on time, otherwise the next session can't start. Okay, yeah. sorry. Um, so we can provide feedback. <laughs> And uh, we can, any questions, I will be under 30 first. And please wait for the thank you slide. I spent like half an hour to make it. <laughs> thank you so much.